Hi third grade, here is your second video for the week. This is module five, lesson two, and we're beginning on page 123. So make sure that you have module five, lesson two. It begins with use the associative property of multiplication at the top. So that way you know which one you're following along with, doing the work along with me. This lesson, <laughs> I promise, will not take as long as the last one. I apologize. So I can use the associative property to find a product with one one factor as a multiple of 10. So Karina makes $4 each time she walks Mr. Kim's dog, Ralphie. During 10 days last month, Karina walked Ralphie two times each day. To find her pay, Karina multiplies her pay for each day by 10, the number of days she worked. Mr. Kim multiplies the pay for each walk by the number of walks for the month. Explain using which method will Karina earn more and explain. So we can see that Karina's way, she said, I'm going to, this is how much she makes each day, two walks, and it's $4 each time she walks her dog. And it was 10 days last month that she walked the dog. Mr. Kim multiplies 10 walks or 10 days times the twice a day and then multiplies that by the $4. And we want to see if one way makes more money than the other. So Karina hers is 10 times 2 times 4. So does it matter where the the parentheses go when we are multiplying? Let's find out. Well, what is 2 times 4? We always do our parentheses first. 2 times 4 equals, oops, sorry, I'm down too low. 2 times 4 equals 8. And we need to multiply that by 10. So 10 times 8 equals 80. So she thinks she should be making $80. What about Mr. Kim? Do we think she's going to make more money with Mr. Kim's? Less money or the same? Let's try it. So Mr. Kim put his in the order of 10 times 2 times 4. 10 times 2 equals 20. 20 times 4. But well, what's 2 times 4? Or how many 20s? 4 times. So 2, 4, 6, 8. Right? 2, 4, 6, 8. So that would give me 80. Oh my goodness. They make the same amount of money, it didn't matter. You know why? Because this is what's called the associative property. It doesn't matter what order you multiply your numbers in, just as long as you use the same numbers, it doesn't matter, you're gonna get the same answer. So you can mix them around to make it so it's easier for you to multiply, and you're still going to get the same answer. That's the associative property of multiplication. It doesn't matter what order they're in when you multiply, you're still going to get the same answer. Now that doesn't always apply with every process, but with multiplication, it does. So let's practice a few more. Lainey makes $40 for each bookcase she builds. How much does Lainey make for building two bookcases? How could you rewrite two times 40 using 10 as a factor? So let's think about this. Two times 40 equals, well, I would keep my two and I need to have a 10 in here. One of these needs to be 10. Well, I know that if I have 40, how many 10s are in 40? If I count by 10s, how many will I need to get, count to get to 40? 10, 20, 30, 40. There are four 10s in 40. So two times four times 10. So that's the same as two times 40, right? We bro just broke apart our four and do a four times a 10. So how could we use the associative property to change the grouping of our factors? Well, we could just look at how we move the parentheses. So we could do two times four times 10. They're still in the same order, we just moved our parentheses. So if we try to find the product this way, two times four equals two, four, six, eight, right? Two times four equals eight. And we wanna do eight, times 10, eight times 10, count by tens eight times, and you're going to get 80. So Lainey earns $80. So see how it doesn't matter where you have your parentheses, as long as you're multiplying. 
if you are multiplying, you can move those parentheses around and it will help and it will help you make a factor that's easier for you to multiply. All right, Nam pays a studio $5 a minute for video recording. How much does she pay for 30 minutes of recording? So our problem is $5 a minute for 30 minutes. So five times 30 or 30 times five, it doesn't matter, right? So how could we rewrite three times five using a 10 as a factor? So I've got my 30. How many tens do I have in a 30? I have three tens in a 30, all multiplied by five. So how can you use the associated property to regroup the factors? Well, instead of the five being outside the parentheses, couldn't I have the three be outside the parentheses and the five inside the parentheses? So this is telling me I have three groups of 10 times five. Three groups of 10 times five. So if this is three groups of 10 times five, I could just do 10 times five three times. Ten times five equals fifty. So I need three fifties. So three fifties, well fifty plus fifty equals one hundred. One hundred plus fifty equals one hundred fifty. So Nam pays one hundred fifty dollars for thirty minutes of recording. So the same thing up here, we could have wrote two groups of right? two groups of four times 10, we could have done, which is the same as down here, or we could have done our multiplication, 10 times five, and then take that answer and multiply it by three, okay? There's, those are the two different ways that we could use the associative property for multiplication to solve our problem. So let's go to number three. So we have Ashley, and she sells 40 shirts at a thrift store, and she sells them for $6 each. How could we use the associative and distributive properties to find out how much money she takes in? Well, she's got 40 shirts and she sold them for $6 a piece. So our multiplication problem is 40 times six. So first we're gonna rewrite 40 times six using 10 as a factor. So if I have 40, how many groups of 10 do I have? I have four groups of 10, right? Four times 10 equals 40 and it's all multiplied by six. So now we're gonna use the associative property and move these around. Instead of the six being on the outside of the parentheses, the four is going to be on the outside and we're gonna have 10 times six. So now we could use the distributive property. We have four groups of 10 times six. So I have 10 times six plus 10 times six plus 10 times six plus 10 times six, which is what we did on the last module or the last lesson, right? So 10 times six equals 60. So each one of these is 60. So 60 plus 60 plus 60 plus 60. And we've got some space over here. So if you need some space to do the work, if you don't want to add all four up, you could just take two of them and then double it. So instead of doing that, if you want to do it this way, you could also do it like this. So zero plus zero is zero. 6 plus 6 is 12. So I know I have two groups of 60 plus 60. So I could now add 120 plus 120. 0 plus 0 is 0. 2 plus 2 is 4. 1 plus 1 is 2. So 240. So Ashley takes in $240. Oops. All right. So let's check for some understanding. Manny earns $30 each day washing cars. He works three days each week. How much does he earn? So what's our multiplication problem for this? It's 30 times three. So I'm gonna take my 30, right? And I'm gonna do groups of 10. How many? Three groups of 10. So three times 10 times three. So I'm gonna move my parentheses, but this time I'm gonna actually put my three times my three together and it all multiplied by 10. How much is three times three? 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If I count by threes three times, I get nine. So then nine times 10. What is nine times 10? Nine groups of 10, you count by 10 nine times, you're going to get 90. So Manny earns $90. All right, we're going to show two ways to group the fractors and then write the product. So 3 times 2 equals 3 times. Let's take our 20, and we're going to rewrite it using 10 as a factor. So how many 10s do we have in 20? We have two 10s. So if I switch around my parentheses, I could do 3 times 2 times 10. What's 3 times 2? Two? 3 groups of 2, 2, 4, 6. Three groups of two is six. So we've got six times our 10. What's six times 10? Count by tens six times. And we get 60. All right, let's regroup number three. Two times 50. So our 50, using 10 as a factor, we have how many tens? We have five tens. So I'm going to move around my parentheses. So I've got 2 times 5 times 10. What's 2 times 5? 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. If I count by 2s, 5 times I get 10. So 10 times 10, if I count by 10s, 10 times I get 100. All right. So now our on your own part, if you want to pause the video, you can and do this independently, or you can um, keep working with me. All right, so Jess finds 8 times 70 using 8 times, and then the parentheses 7 plus 10. Is Jess correct? Hmm, let's look at this problem. What did she do wrong? 70, is 77 plus 10? If I do 7 plus 10, what will I get? 7 plus 10 is 17, right? So that's why she is incorrect because this should be what, instead of a plus, what should she have put here? She should have put a multiplication sign, right? It should be times. So no, she's not correct. She should put... A, we'll do this, multiplication symbol, not a plus symbol. So she used the wrong symbol, right? She used a plus instead of a multiplication. She should have used multiplication. All right, now we're going to just have to write in the unknown number. So if we have 6 times, or sorry, 3 times 60, and we want to rename it, what are we going to rename it? We're going to rename it 3 times, how many tens do we have? We have 6 tens. So 3 times 6 times 10. What about renaming this one? We have 80 times 5 equals how many, what number times 10 times 5? Well, how many 10s do we have in this number? We have 8 10s in this number, so 8 times 10 times 5. Now we're going to show two ways to group the factors and write the product. So 8 times 60, how many groups of 10 do we have? We've got 8 groups of 10 times 60. So I could move this around, right? Couldn't I? I could now have 8 times 10 times 6. So 10 times 6 is 60 times 8. I would need 60 8 times. So 60 8 times. 1, 2, 3, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a lot of 60s. 
So 60 plus 60 is 120. So each one of these would be 120. So now I've got 120 four times. 120 plus 120 is 240. So now I have 240 plus 240, and that equals 480. So now we've got 9 times 50. So we're going to do 9 times. We have 5 groups of 10. So I can rewrite this as 9 times 5 times 10. Well, let's count by fives nine times. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45. So I have 45 times 10. Well, if I were to add 45 10 times, right, I would get 450. I'm just adding a zero to the end of that number. All right, and our last one. Sue practices the guitar four hours each week for 30 weeks. How many hours does Sue practice? Use the associative property and distributed property to solve and show your work. So first we know she does four hours each week for 30 weeks. So our multiplication problem would be 30 times four. And that's the same as we have three groups of 10 times 4. So I'm going to move, I'm going to switch my parentheses. So that's the same as 3 times 10 times 4. So this is 3 groups of 10 times 4, right? 3 groups of 10 times 4. What are 3 groups of 10 times 4? Well, I'll do 10 times 4 plus 10 times 4 plus 10 times 4. 10 times 4 equals 40. So and I need that 3 times. 40 plus 40 plus 40. 40 plus 40 equals 80. And 80 plus 40 equals 120. So she practices 120 hours. So I'm going to check the homework really quickly. Good with those. So you are good to go. So you're going to do the whole um, 5.2 and then take pictures of the front and the back and send them to me or just send them to me in school. I need the black and white worksheets sent to me because those are the ones that I'm going to grade. Um, I like seeing these because then it shows me that you followed along and did the work with me. But then the black and white sheet is the one that I will be grading, okay? Um, I know um, one of you has been doing a beautiful job turning them in, but I need the other my other kiddo to make sure and turn that stuff in. All right, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I will see you soon. Bye.